Well, let's get you some perspective on uh, South Sudan's four years of independence. I'm now joined live in our Nairobi studios by Mbidwe Mwenda, a consultant and advisor to the South Sudanese government. Mr. Mwenda, there was so much hope when uh, South Sudan gained independence. Now, four years later, do you consider the country a failed state? Uh, thank you for having me. Absolutely not. I don't think the country has become a failed state. Um, Every nation uh, in its infancy, you know, barely, almost every nation in Africa in their infant uh, months and years went through a form of turmoil. And uh, what we are witnessing in South Sudan is absolutely not unique in Africa. Um, so I can't yet uh, rule out that uh, uh, this country cannot come back. I think it's not a failed state. There's so much goodwill, there's so much hope still. And I think South Sudanese will still prove all of us uh, that, yes, they can actually uh, stand on their feet again. That is, of course, everyone's wish and hope. But some are concerned that there might be more fighting in the country, particularly when you look at the fact that Riek Machar has now called on the president to step down. Absolutely. I mean, Riek Machar is uh, sometimes is comical. I mean, how do you come to Nairobi and uh, make the announcement in Nairobi? If Riek Masha was as bold as he is, he should have told Kenyatta to resign. I mean, President Kenyatta is, when he's in Nairobi, he only threatened the president who is in charge in Nairobi. If he really wants uh, 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 President Salva Kiel to, to quit by midnight last night, he should uh, be saying that in Juba, not in Nairobi. So I think we should all treat his uh, comments with all the contempt that they deserve. Well, Mr. Mwend, of course, the UN is not uh, feeling particularly confident at this particular point they're talking about arms embargoes and sanctions in your opinion what is the la the solution uh, to lasting peace in uh, south sudan uh, previously i wrote an article in uh, one of the local dailies here where i advised uh, the the warring parties in south sudan to read from kenyan history um, a lot of you know brothers from south sudan really uh, look at kenya as their brother as their big brother as their mentor and one part of our history in Kenya is the uh, post-election violence of 2007 and 8. And when we were almost sinking into the pit of our abyss, our leaders put, you know, their personal interests down. In particular, I hail the former Prime Minister, uh, pres uh, uh, former Prime Minister Raila Odinga. He, he was humble enough to say, "Okay, I'll come to the negotiation table." They dropped all preconditions. What South Sudanese leaders need to do, especially the opposition, is to drop all the preconditions, come to the table and negotiate with the president. Salva Kiir is a very kind president, is a very kind man. That notwithstanding, though, I think he has an ear to listen to this man, but they need to come to the table. They, they've been so hard and very difficult to come and negotiate with the president. They, every negotiation and agreement they have done, they have broken it down. And you see, the president has the responsibility to protect the country. At the end of the day, it is him that could go to the Hague if things go wrong. So he has to be president, and these guys can only come and negotiate with him. Analysis there from Mbidre Mwenda a consultant and advisor to the South Sudanese government. Thank you for joining us from our Nairobi studio.